Skyrim is a video game where you play as Dragonborn, a powerful legend with the power to shout so loud it literally blows things away. So you'll start up Skyrim and the first thing you'll notice is the insanely impressive selection of races you can play as. Humans, elves, lions, tigers and bears, oh my. I'm gonna play as a dark elf because I'm into magic and arrows and oh you poor thing. So you uh, wanna go on a date sometime? Ugh, no! I'm gonna die alone. The game starts as we're all of course used to. I'm captured crossing the border into Skyrim, which is a minor crime, but I happen to also be around Ulfric Stormcloak, head of the Stormcloak Rebellion, who are fighting against the Imperial occupation of- <sighs> Don't worry, this all very quickly becomes less important than your missing baby in Fallout 4. I had a son once. Now I just look after this crib I filled with screws. So the Imperials start executing us as rebels. They chop this guy's head off, he falls to the ground, I fill out a form in triplicate, and blood eventually squirts out. The dragons of legend return, saving my juicy melons, and we all try to escape underground. While we're doing so, Rayloff here provides some much needed advice. We're escaping headlong. I'm sorry, Rayliff, could you speak up a bit? <laughs> We escape underground and have to fight our way out of various scenarios. Locked doors, torturous dungeons, these bones on the floor, as I've mentioned, are a genuine hazard. Oh, 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 oh god. Now this opening does get a bit of flack. Sure, it moves about as slow as a snail with horse trouble. And if you try to use console commands to speed up the game even 1%, it sends you careening into the sky like the simplest of contraptions I try to create in the new Zelda. Ah! But once you're free to move about, I'd say this opening is pretty well designed. Mainly because it introduces you organically to a decent selection of the game's mechanics without it feeling too much like a tutorial. You aren't just in some boring training area with a guy that says, here's the spell for shooting fire. Practice it on that child I've trapped in a cage. With pleasure. <laughs> You'll learn how to use weapons, loot bodies, pick locks, drink potions, practice sneaking, all with the means of escaping a dramatic beheading and a dragon attack. It's pretty... Uh... And can I just say right now how good the lockpick mechanic is? It makes total logical sense in the context of the game and all you really need to do is carefully find the right spot to put the pick and <sighs> it's brief but you get complete satisfaction could you imagine if Bethesda had instead implemented a really long-winded word-based puzzle minigame that interrupted the gameplay for minutes at a time as a fundamental way of operating essential objects in the game oh look a pc i better just log on okay that took some time but it's gotta be purification I'll purify you! That was great. I wish I wasn't wearing my pyjamas for it though. I can't show your feet on the internet. Is that right? So me and one of the rebels finally make it to an exit that leads outside and oh goodness me. This, th this, this hill. Ooh, mama. This is the exact moment that launched 60 million copies. So you now need to walk to the nearby settlement of Riverwood and warn them about the dragon you saw. And this journey really is one of the greatest sequences in any game I've ever played. The sound design alone makes it so memorable and oh, it's just lovely. Birds and crickets are off in the distance, the wind gently blowing through the trees and grass, running water flowing by. Anyway, sorry, the game. You get to Riverwood and warn them about the dragon attack. And from here, the main story splits into two major areas. Continue to investigate the returning dragons, or resolve the political conflict in Skyrim. If you suffer an embolism and choose to look into the latter, you first go and see your old pal Ulfric from earlier and have a chat. <gasps> what? what mod was that? Oh no, I've accidentally assassinated Ulfric Stormcloak, Jarl of Windhelm and head of the Stormcloak Rebellion. How is the civil war between the Imperial Legion and the Stormcloaks going to resolve itself? N look, seriously, I don't have time for this. I have to work out what this weird gem does. A new hand. <laughs> Touches the beacon. Oh no, I'm gonna put this down. <laughs> You're mine, bitch. Ah! If you choose to be a normal player though and look into the dragon attacks, you eventually work out where one is going to be, and the Jarl sends you and some of his top men to go and wait for it. So, how are you guys feeling about the imminent dragon attack? This doesn't look good. Uh, and you? This doesn't look good. Oh god, we're dead! The dragon of course arrives, and you have a genuinely epic battle, especially given this game came out in 2011. The dragon's pathfinding by modern standards might be a bit off, but otherwise I have a good time. There are some people helping you with this fight, but primarily you're the one who does the most damage to the dragon and is responsible for its death. And this is an aspect of the game where people start to get a bit gripey with Skyrim. What, gripey is actually a word? What we have here is essentially a role-playing game where a level 3 elf just took out the most threatening enemy in the entire world on his first day on the job. Jesus, we make Legolas look like he's barely trying. 
There, he's dead. Oh, fuck off. Jokes aside, this does nicely sum up one of the main criticisms this game gets. See, even though you are pretty much the lowest level in all of your stats at the very start of the game, you are still pretty highly proficient in all of them. I beat this dragon with a bow and arrow, and it was the first time so far in this playthrough that I had ever even held one. I mean, in the Fallout games, your guns would at least jam sometimes if you had a low-level small gun skill. But here you're just Russell Crowe with every weapon you find lying around. Back in my day, role-playing games didn't used to mess around with this stuff. Try using a gun in the original Deus Ex when you're untrained in it, and it will sense your weakness and completely give up on you. I've got you now. I can't believe you've done this. And it is a bit ridiculous. On the way into town on day one, I bumped into three fully armoured guards transporting a prisoner. And I thought, why not? I'll save my game and I'll try and rescue him. Then I accidentally dropped the controller. It landed on the attack button, and after looking up from picking it up, everyone was dead. The three guards, the prisoner I was trying to save, even a small family of innocent deer 15 metres away couldn't escape the unending fury that was the swing of my level one axe. Now there are of course loads of mods that have addressed this issue by balancing the difficulty or just making the game more difficult. Back in 2015 I actually downloaded and tried Requiem. Requiem. Not only did it promise to make the game more difficult, it did so in a realistic way that would make the game more immersive. It was called a role playing mod after all and oh my god did it really revolutionise things for me. Revolutionise? Everything is impossible to kill. I stood there hacking away at the indestructible crab carapace of the level one mud crab for hours, each well-timed blow slicing away only the smallest sliver of health. This crab is basically the first enemy you meet after the tutorial opening sequence and it's now completely unstoppable. Send these guys in against the Imperial Legion. Skyrim is for the crabs. And if I made the slightest error in battle, its claws the size of fucking cake forks would ravage my frail, fully armored adult body. And off I would float so I could silently ponder the terrible indiscretion of trying to take on a two foot crab with an eight foot axe. At least the dragons aren't too easy to kill now. Oh my god. People say that changing this game through modding somehow saved it, but I think they might be confusing different for better. And you know the community will defend this mod to the death. Mud crabs have high armor compared to other wildlife. I'm sorry, Ziga Fregomiga, but let me introduce you to Newton's third law. I've been playing the amazing Tears of the Kingdom lately, and it paces itself so much better. Early on, for example, I found this three-headed electric dragon thing, and it, of course, absolutely destroyed me in one hit, but don't you worry. I know someone with the strength and skills needed to take this guy on. I need to reach my friend! I salute you. So after uninstalling it, I beat the dragon and somehow absorb his soul. This reveals to the world that I am dragonborn, slayer of dragons. Okay, good, that one isn't a word. And I can use dragon's souls to unlock abilities called shouts, which I can then use in battle to knock enemies over, as well as a few other abilities. The Greybeards of Mount Doom hear my shout and respond with their own, which basically means they want me to go and see them. A while passes, but I do eventually reach the top of their mountain and meet them. Long story short, they teach me how shouts can do more than just knocking cows off of mountains. <laughs> they specifically teach me how to run fast, but now I know that there are loads of different shouts to find by exploring Minecraft, Skyrim, disarm, breathe fire, slow time, summon dirt heavy. And I'd say that this is the exact moment in the game where you've unlocked enough of the game to forget about the main story. So I thank everyone for their help, leave and jump straight down the mountain, off to gather powers, fight bosses and complete random side quests, like a normal person would. And that's one of the best things about about this game, you can just go. You can jump your way down any deadly vertical mountain. Pretty much anything is possible. I've given up on the main story at this exact moment so many times, in fact, that I have a hack to get down the mountain at record speed. Just go to the top of this tower here and meet with this greybeard. Pick his pocket and steal a single piece of worthless honeycomb. Make sure you get caught and he'll react appropriately. But it was just some honey, I'm basically your religion's Jesus. Then you'll fall like a rag doll on crack for a full minute collide with the ground repeatedly at half the speed of sound and get back up. You know, it still always surprises me that you can survive that. Oh, no, sorry, I am dead. That cow caught up with me. And from this point on, there are no rules. No matter what direction you walk in, there'll be more stuff to do than you can get through in an entire month. I mean, look at all the different locations you can go to in this amazing game, and each one, literally anything could happen. From being challenged to a drinking competition, to entering someone's mind palace, to tackle the Daedric Prince of Madness. So many different and interesting ideas have been crammed into this world, it 
really is a joy to explore. The downsides though come from not knowing if the quest you're starting is going to lead you on a perilous journey to tackle a werewolf in order to curry favour with the gods, or explore a two mile long cave of repeating textures and the undead. There are so many caves filled with the undead in this game, and this is another of Skyrim's major drawbacks, because the quality of quests you can take on vary from anything between saving this dimension from collapse or feeding a rabbit a carrot. Actually, this is really fun. What holds this quest quality and balance together for me though is just the sheer joy I get from doing anything in Skyrim. It is without a doubt one of the most atmospheric and immersive games I have ever played, and because of that, for me, just walking around looking at things is great fun. And if you can make just walking around in your game fun, well, Christmas has come early. Oh my god, it's Santa! And not to keep raving about the newest Zelda, but for me it really does do something very similar to Skyrim, in that so much effort has been successfully spent on making the environment feel alive, distinct, and interesting. It leads to the player being happy to do just anything that is presented to them, like, oh my god. Is that a well? I must get inside it. Yes! Ooh, yeah, I'm in a well now. Ooh, no one's gonna find me. <laughs> really, what's going on with Tears of the Kingdom? It really has just become a series of underground wells and never-ending caves. What is this, Skyrim? You know, while we're here, what's also great about the Switch is I can play, but also stroke cats at the same time. I think Nintendo should retitle this game after me, Luna. What, you think it should be called The Legend of Luna? The Legend of Luna! Ah! <laughs> the complexity and detail of this game world isn't all smiles and sunshine, of course. It leads to there being enough pick upable items in the game to fill the pockets of even the girthiest of girthy ch- <laughs> Enough to fill a giant's pocket. Girthy just means large. Take a cold shower, people. Just look at my inventory after the first 20 minutes of gameplay. It's a total unorganizable mess. I mean, the misc section has mining resources, soul gems, junk materials, and torches, all in the same alphabetically organized menu. This leaves me in the curious position that when trying to equip the torch at the bottom of my bag to light the way, do I detect a case of the rattles? I have to first scroll past dozens of useless items. Ore, ingots, jugs, locks, child's doll, human skull, torture tool, bloody rags. I'm just gonna put these away. Look, there's even a bucket in here. No, 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 you take that off. Soon everyone's gonna be doing it. Oh no, it's caught on. Jesus, it's almost as messy as the inventory system from the Resident Evil 4 remake in here. That's right, they've added crafting. Crafting to my action horror comedy fast-paced over the shoulder shooter. Fuck me, what's next? They're gonna add a cooking mama to Dead Space, a fruit ninja section in Metroid, a dating sim in The Last of Us. The clicker is happy that you also enjoy walks on the beach. Try complimenting it. <laughs> the original Resident Evil 4 was the king of convenience. Leon didn't have time to stop and craft. He was too busy dry shampooing his hair. Which, by the way, now in the remake, he looks like he's sporting a satin rug on his head. Organizing your inventory in the original was like all of your birthdays coming at once as you seamlessly sorted your grenades by color and your guns by how masculine they made you feel. Now, for some reason, we have reams of awkwardly shaped mundane things to deal with. Large resources bag, gun Powder, small resources, bag. Oh my god, they're trying to upset me. Mods! You wanna mod Skyrim? You wanna be able to make masterpiece music videos like this? Spooky, scary skeletons send shivers down your spine. Shrieking skulls will sh Well, it's all too complicated to explain. Instead, here are my top mods for making Skyrim look. Well, just look at it. So to do that, the only mod I actually have installed is Enhanced Lights and FX. Seriously, that's it. My recommendations for visuals are over. Leave. I mean, sure, you're half blind some of the time, but if you ask me, underground caves and the night should be fucking dark. While we're on the topic of visuals, I have, of course, tried a lot of popular graphics mods. I stand by that you really do not need six months of modding time and a thousand different mods that change every texture in the game while reducing the frame rate to a sickly and weak old man. Seriously, there are guides out there that will suggest you change everything. Everything. Look at this popular mod guide. It has to break everything into sections. Here, it has an entire section dedicated to rocks. 4K duck break brown version recommended. Oh, finally, my Skyrim rocks are brown. I can die happy. A lot of people will recommend weather mods, but I often find them very distracting. See, this one mod I tried here made the rain look completely out of place, and combine it with how dark my game is at night, it makes for a very surreal experience. It got even stranger because I met a Khajiit out in it. Mike wishes you well. 
Well, that's all well and good, Mick, but what the hell are you doing out here? Your fur is getting all wet. Ugh, you'd never catch me out in a storm. Yeah, all right, Luna, you think you're all dignified, but I know the truth. Your tail is so poofy, it keeps bringing twigs into the house. And it doesn't end there. Realistic water, too, apparently does fucking nothing. Enhanced blood textures make everyone look like they're covered in strawberry jam. And Skyrim Flora Overhaul runs about as smooth as chunky peanut butter. Oh, I'm getting hungry. Am I missing something here? All of these mods are in the top 20 of the most endorsed mods of all time, and real Talk, they are all very well made and they have a lot of great features but i think skyrim already looks great there's no need to improve it oh no i've become a fanboy todd help me tell me about uh, minecraft on the xbox oh thanks todd that's really calmed me down as you continue to explore the world you'll start to discover that there are several factions in skyrim and by this i mean there are more factions than you could ever hope to meet before dying of old age and in true bethesda style pretty much any faction you meet will let you become their highest honorable member if you so much as sneeze on any of their belongings that was amazing would you like to become our new leader the thieves guild is perfectly guilty of this see if you simply enter the city of riften a member of that highly secretive guild Brinjol will accost you in broad daylight and basically confess to you that he is in fact a member. He will then ask you to steal a ring from a lockbox and plant it on someone the guild has targeted so that that person will get arrested. Then if you try but you get caught stealing the ring and mess the whole thing up because say you are a terrible thief with terrible sneak skills, Brinjol will still say even though you fouled up the job I still think you've got the spark I'm looking for. What is happening here? Is this some kind of multi-level pyramid scheme? Are you having a minor stroke Brinjolf? Tell me can you smell burnt sweet rolls. No matter who you are or what your skills are at the time, almost any guild will let you join at the drop of a hat. You could be an enormous hulking orc with the lowest sneak skill possible, wearing a full set of clanking metal armor, and he'd still say, you seem like great thief material to me. Thank you, Gragnor bring you human arms. It completely ceases all suspension of disbelief that this is anything other than a video game, and I am the person who is supposed to be winning. However, this, as I've said, isn't just some unusual aspect of the game. I think it's basically the entire point and it's exactly what Todd here set out to do. This game is so accessible and relaxing while still being as deep as my eternal hatred for the Resident Evil 4 remake. See, you at home can inhale the vapor from any relaxing herbs you like. Lavender, chamomile, grass pods, and you'll still be able to get through this entire game without ever having to stress yourself out. Just pound that attack button and down health potions like you're as thirsty as an Argonian maid on a Friday night, and you'll eventually take down any dragon foolish enough to stand in the way of your calm demeanor. So there we go, that's Skyrim. It's great and I'm never gonna talk about it again. Chapter closed. Wait, why are you still here? Luna's scenes are over, the voice actor has already sent me all her lines, she can't say anything else. I know what you all want. Okay, but for copyright reasons this might get removed, so I'm gonna need to end the video properly, and then the madness can begin. <clears throat> Thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you when I review Fallout 5. Okay, I think everyone's gone. Here we go. Spooky, scary skeletons send shivers down your spine. Shrieking skulls will shock your soul and seal your doom tonight. Spooky, scary skeletons speak with such a screech. You're shaking, shudder in surprise when you hear these zombies shriek. We're so sorry, skeletons, you're so misunderstood. You only want to socialize, but I don't think we should. Cause spooky, scary skeletons.